My name is Tom Antos, I'm a filmmaker and I wanted to give you guys sort of a guide on best practices so you can consistently deliver at the same quality when it comes to your work. As someone who works creating images for a living, uh, the tools that I'm using are uh, obviously very important. It all starts uh, with capturing the right image, but equally important is how I treat the images in post-production. Now, when it comes to cameras, I, I always try to find the right balance between uh, obviously cost, size, the speed of sort of workflow, uh, but also something that's gonna give me the most the dynamic range, uh, the biggest color range. Uh, and if possible uh, to capture it in RAW because it really comes down to uh, being able to capture as much information as you can while you're there on set and the cameras are rolling and, and that moment is happening uh, live right in front of you. Uh, since you can't rewind time, it's really important to, again, capture as much information as you can uh, right there on the set. And then later on, when you're in your editing suite uh, and, you, and you're now no longer worried or stressed out by the logistics such as weather or, uh, you know, if the actor sort of hit the right mark or things like that, uh, that's when you can sit there and really tweak the image for as long as you want. In post is when you see how important it is to capture the most dynamic range, especially when you're working with cameras like the Arri Alexa or Ursa Mini that are pushing 15 steps of, of light, or, or the incredible extended dynamic range that you get with some of the RED cameras using HDRX. It's very important having the right tools in post-production so you can not only manipulate all that data, but also so you can see it. Uh, whether you're finishing for broadcast or, or maybe just a YouTube video and you're outputting in all those different formats like uh, Rec 2020 or P3, uh, at the end, again, you're limited by the tools that you're using. Uh, I myself uh, couldn't imagine these days just using any average monitor uh, to finish and judge my work. Asus has really delivered uh, on that end of film production. Their ProArt PA32UC display uh, has 100 color uh, accuracy or, or close to it in all of those different profiles. Uh, it's also just a nice big 10-bit IPS display uh, and it's a true HDR10 with over a billion colors. Now, to really be able to see and appreciate HDR uh, properly uh, and, you know, and see all the details in the shadows or the brightest of brightest pixels in the, in the highlights, uh, you really need a monitor that can display all of that brightness. Uh, and this monitor has an incredible 1000 nits of brightness. It means that even if I'm working with all the office lights on and the windows open with daylight pouring in, I can still see all of the details. Anything less than that and you're really just working blind. You have to be able to see what you've captured before you can correctly adjust all of that footage. Another obstacle in today's film production is the huge amounts of data that we're working with, especially if you're shooting in RAW. Uh, you need to be able to move terabytes of data and to do it quickly. Uh, Thunderbolt 3 is a huge improvement. Plus, uh, the other benefit is that these days it's not just for carrying data, but you can even use it as a display port. I often get asked about color accuracy and how to go about that so that I know that I'm always seeing the most accurate colors. Uh, now, obviously a very important part of that is how you actually calibrate your monitor. Uh, these days, most of the monitors come calibrated in the factory uh, and this monitor is no exception, but you'd be a fool thinking that this is enough. Every display, uh, including even the ones on your cameras, are, are gonna start to drift over time and the colors are just not gonna look right. So. You really want to get into a habit of calibrating all of your monitors, uh, I would say every two weeks or at least once a month. There is a lot of great calibration tools these days that are affordable, uh, plus ACES makes it even easier to keep their displays calibrated because you can save the actual calibrated color profile right in the internal chip that's built into the monitor. Any display can be calibrated, but in most cases it means that that color profile is saved locally on your PC. Now, the second you disconnect your monitor, all that color calibration is gone. The same if you just simply switch out your monitor, connect it to another video source or, or another PC, uh, you're gonna have to again recalibrate it on that uh, new machine. Uh, with the Asus ProArt monitor's internal scalar IC chip, all of that calibration data is actually saved in the monitor, which just means that you can easily switch to another PC or video monitor, or, or for example, if you by accident format your computer and you lose all that uh, calibration data, uh, your monitor uh, still has uh, the calibration baked into it. So in short, always try to pick a camera that's gonna let you capture the most dynamic range and colors, and if possible, do it all in RAW. Then make sure that you actually back up all of that data uh, because after all, you know, whatever you have on a little memory card is worth as much as your whole production. And then finally, in post-production, make sure that you keep all of your displays properly calibrated. 
uh, and, and so that you, you know that you're seeing uh, what you're actually doing so that uh, you can transform all of that raw data into the, the images that you want your audience to see. Anyways, once again, my name is Tom. Uh, if you guys want more filmmaking advice, uh, tutorials or film gear reviews, then uh, as always, check out my website at tomantosfilms.com. Uh, over there, you can also sign up to my newsletter. And if you want to support me even more, then join me on Patreon. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.